All right, welcome, oh, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, for our awesome 5.2 substitution day one. So as we progress through our chapter five learning, we're going to go ahead and learn about some different methods to be able to solve your systems of equation. So instead of graphing, sometimes a substitution method is a little bit better. And we're going to go ahead and use that when we have an isolated variable. So if we have any equations like y equals or maybe even an x equals, instead of graphing, because again, we don't always have graphing coordinate planes ready for us, um, but the substitution method, students have actually shown that they have performed and understood it really well the last two years, which is amazing considering oh, what was going on. So instead of graphing, we're going to take a break from that and talk about substitution. Now, the substitution is very similar to the substitution that you did in 6th grade, 7th grade, even in 8th grade. But we're actually going to substitute more information, which makes it just a little bit more complicated. Now, ultimately, we are still looking for our point of intersection. So that means if we were able to graph it, we would be able to find the true point of intersection, which again is where the two lines meet or cross. So looking at this as an example, we're not going to solve it. We're just going to look at it really quick. If you notice, the second equation has the isolated variable. It says y equals. Now, commonly, it is y equals, but sometimes it's x equals. And again, sometimes we have different variables than x and y. Regardless, we're going to go ahead and use our substitution method. So we're going to go ahead and do a few of them. If you notice, this one here is a little bit more 6th grade, probably 7th grade, but we have done it for 8th grade. Solve if x is equal to 2. So if we know x is equal to 2, we're going to do just a little bit of substitution, which means, again, at the x location, we're going to go ahead and substitute the 2. And this is the way that we taught you, again, using your data table. We picked our x's. In Chapter 4, we picked our x's and solved for our y's. So at the x location, again, I'm going to ask you to circle what x is equal to, and we're going to draw an arrow to the x location. Now, that concept of drawing it to the correct location is very key because some students mistakenly draw it to the wrong location. And that's why we're starting off with this pretty easy example. Well, if x equals 2, it's now going to be 2 times 2. And again, we've done this before. So we really have 4 plus 3, so that means we really have 7. So if x is 2, y is 7, so that would be an actual ordered pair, or this one is just solving for 7. But remember, we're looking for a point of intersection, which is an actual ordered pair. All right, so looking at this one, this is our first real example. We always want to have an isolated variable to do substitution method. If we don't have a variable that's already isolated, we're not going to be doing our substitution method. We're going to try a different method that we'll learn later on. So if y is equal to x plus 1, we're going to go ahead and circle what y is equal to. So go ahead and circle your x plus 1. And just like on that previous basic example, we're going to draw an arrow to what it's equal to. Well, on the first one, it says y is equal to. So we're going to draw an arrow to the y. Now, don't make this mistake, because this is what a lot of students do. They say, well, if I circle x, then I draw my arrow to the x. But if you remember, over here, we didn't circle the x. We circled the 2, and we made the arrow to the x. So for this one, we didn't circle the y. Or sorry, we didn't circle the... Oh, sorry, that analogy is really bad there. Ignore that. All right, circle x plus 1, draw it to the y. Apologize for that mistake there. y is equal to, which means we now have this new equation, 4x plus, and then in parentheses, x plus 1. Now, sometimes there might be a 2y, a 3y, a negative 3y. What we need to do is substitute what we have at the location that we need. Now we do our solving. Well, since there's no number in front of the parentheses, I can just say it is really a 4x plus an x. Because again, it's like a 1 there, right? So 4x plus x is a 5x. The plus 1 stays the same. And now we can solve our simple equation.
Again, we've been solving equations since chapter one, since seventh grade. All right, x is equal to one. Well, now that I know half of my answer, I got to be able to find y. And remember, y is equal to x plus one. So if we already have the information that was circled and we bring it over to the side, we can go ahead and find our y. So y is equal to x plus one, which means y is equal to one plus one. So y is equal to two. So for this answer though, remember we have an X and a Y answer. So it means we need an ordered pair. If you wanted to check it on that second equation, four times one, which is four, four plus two, does that give us six? It definitely does. So that means our answer checked out. The solution is X is one and Y is two, which again means it is the point of intersection. That's where if we were to graph both lines, that's where they would cross. All right, for this one, a lot of students uh, tend to be less comfortable with the equations that say x equals instead of y equals because we spend a lot more time with the y equals. But again, just a frame of reference, it's the same concept. You circle and you substitute. This time, x equals, so I draw my arrow to the x. But notice how it said 3x which means I need to go ahead and write it as three times whatever I circled, because that's what X is equal to. So that's why we use our nice parentheses. And then if you notice, just like in chapter one, we're gonna use our distributive property and multiply. Three times six Y is 18 Y, three times negative 11 is negative 33, and then the rest stays the same. Once we do our distributive property, we combine our like terms. Gives me 16y subtract 33 is equal to negative one. We're gonna add 33 to both sides. And then we're gonna divide both sides by 16. And remember, that's only half of the answer. The other half is connected to the x. So whatever we circled, <clears throat> x is equal to 6y subtract 11. Bring that off to the side for part two. To solve for x, we're going to say 6 times y, which is now 6 times 2. So X is one, our answer, the solution is one, two. To check it again on that standard form equation, three times one, subtract two times two, three subtract four is negative one. So it does check out and our solution is one, two. Now to make it a little bit more complicated again, we might get some negative answers or even fractional answers. So just be very careful with the skills that we've already taught you and go from there. So let's go ahead and try another one. Ooh, notice this one. Now I've been told stories from previous students that some of the high school teachers really like to teach substitution method by having both equations with y equals. So if you notice on here, both equations are y equals, which actually tells us we can go ahead and set them equal to each other. Because when I circle and draw my arrow, they're just simply equal to each other. And that's what we also saw in chapter one. When we have variables on both sides, we simply move the smallest variable to help us solve. So it means three is equal to X plus five, so we go ahead and solve for x by subtracting five both sides. So it means x is gonna be negative two. So if you notice, we've got a negative answer. So we have gotta be just a little bit more careful to find our second answer. So let's take the one that we circled. Now, technically you could use the other one, really doesn't matter, but we wanna keep it consistent with our students and just say, whatever you circled, go ahead and use that one. And remember, it's 1x, so it's 1 times negative 2. So it's really just negative 2 plus 3. 
which is 1. So if you wanted to check it, you can. You're going to use the other one. The y equals 2x plus 5. So y is 1. And then 2 times x, 1 does equal 1. It checks out. So that means our solution this time is negative 2, 1. All right, going to go ahead and ask to pause the video, pass out the worksheet, and we'll do a little bit of homework help. Uh, welcome back. So let's do just a few together. If you notice, it doesn't matter how they look. We are looking for our isolated variable. So every equation so far on this front page has at least one of them. I should say each system has at least one of them with an isolated variable. So let's go ahead and do number two. If you notice, x equals. So we're going to go ahead and circle what x is equal to. And we're going to draw it to the x location. So our new equation, instead of x subtract y, is going to be 3y in parentheses. Subtract y equals 4. Now, since there's just a simple 1 in the front, it really doesn't matter. 3y subtract y is a 2y. Divide by 2, both sides. So that means y is equal to 2. Then we come over here to find our second answer, second part of the answer, the one that we circled. It says 3y, so it means 3 times y's value, which is 2. So it means x has to be 6. So remember, our answer is still going to be an ordered pair because that ordered pair is re or is actually the point of intersection. So if we were to graph both lines, it's where they cross. All right, let's try, ooh, yeah, let's try number seven. If you notice this one, it says x equals, where on the previous one, it is also x equals, so trying to show you a little bit more of the problems that students are a little bit less comfortable with. But let's again just circle whatever x is equal to and draw our equation to the x. 3x, so it means three parentheses. Whatever x is equal to goes inside. It's whatever you circle. Three times six y is eighteen y. Three times two is six. Variables are on the same side, so we're going to go ahead and combine them. Ooh, look at this one: eighteen y subtract eighteen y. A lot of students do this, which again reminds them that the y's are no longer there. So we have 6 equals 4. Does 6 equal 4? It does not. Do you remember what our special answer is? No solution. So it doesn't matter <clears throat> if the variables are disappearing. We can still continue on from our chapter 1 information. Remember, if we had 6 does equal 6, then that would be called infinitely many solutions. All right, let's see. Last one, number 4. Notice this one, it says y equals. It's written a little bit backwards, but it's still y equals. So I'm going to circle this. I'm going to draw it to the y. So it says x plus 3y, so it's three parentheses. Whatever we circled goes inside the parentheses. So that's x plus, and then we multiply, 9x. So x plus 9x is 10x. 
do division. X is equal to 1. Once you have that answer, you come over here to the side. And again, the 1 that you circled, I wrote it as Y equals in the front this time. The x we think is 1, so y is 3. Answer is an ordered pair, x first, y second. Now remember, you could graph them if you wanted to, but we're teaching you a different strategy called the substitution method. So you're going to finish the front side just like we did together here. And then when you get to the back, you've got some more practice problems with triangles and so on from chapter 3. So go ahead and do your best. Be awesome. And we'll talk to you later.